Hello everyone, welcome to Learn Workflow. In this video, we'll discuss another network problem. This is a continuous server sub. This is a middle type problem, and we'll understand how we can solve this problem easily. We'll understand it from the core. Before moving on, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure to subscribe to Learn Workflow for regular lit code videos like this. The question says we are given an integer array nums and the an integer k. So there's a num array and the k being given to us. Now our target is to return true if the nums has a continuous array of size at least two. So nums should have a like must have a continuous size of at least two whose elements sum up to a multiple of k. So this is the main thing. Okay. So there should be at least two elements. Fine. At least two elements whose uh like oh, whose sum is like uh whose sum is equal to like multiple of k. So that simply means this sum uh, mod k uh, can be zero. Okay. The sum mod k can be zero. Fine. So that's what we need to look for. Now, we need at least two elements so we can have uh, all the elements as well. So if you just look at the example, you can see that uh, there are two elements like two plus four which is six and you can see the k is also six. So two plus four, the summation of these two elements is uh, equal to six, okay? Or uh, is a multiple of six, okay? So we can return true. But at the same time, if you take the sum of all the numbers, 23, two, six, four, seven, the sum is 42, which is a multiple of six as well, fine? Uh, six into seven is 42. And that thus we can say that this is true. Right. So this is the uh, main idea behind this question. Okay. This is the main idea behind this. Now, uh, something you need to know or uh, make sure over here is like, see, uh, say there are a number like this, 23, 2. I'm just considering two numbers, 23 plus 2. Right. So what is that? That's 25, right? So if we divide 25 by 6, then what is our remainder? I mean, if we do a modulus operator operation, then what is the remainder? Six for the 24. So uh, what's the remainder? Remainder becomes one, right? R look here. That's important. Remainder becomes one. Now, what if we have divided 20, like we have find a remainder of 23 only. Okay. If we have find a remainder of 23 only, then what remains with us is like uh, three, three, six, uh, 18. Okay, 18, then 5 remains as a remainder. Okay, look here, 5 remains as a remainder. Now, with this remainder, if we have added 2, that is this number, if I have added 2, then what comes up? It comes up to be 7. Now, if we uh, like find a remainder of this particular sum, then also we will find a remainder of 1. Okay, so this is important that we find a remainder of a single element or we find a remainder of the sum of the elements. Or you find the remainder uh, of the remainder of the previous element plus the current element. The, the, our particular remainder remains same. Okay, so this is important for us because we we would be using this uh, often in this like this this concept will be helpful for us. Okay, now let's try to understand how we can uh, find like move towards finding a solution. Now see, we somehow need to uh, like find the values like a total sum because if a particular number is not a uh, like if two sum of two numbers is not a uh, remainder then we to keep adding the numbers right so there what can be uh, situation over here right so 123 is a like if once like what will happen 23 and 2 can be a situation then 23, 2, 4 can be a situation. Then 23, 2, 4, 6 can be a situation. And then all of the numbers can be a situation, right? And also at the same time, we need to see whether 2, 4 only is a situation or not. Because we took 23, 2, 4, but whether 2, 4 only is a number or not. So 2, 4, then whether 2, 4, 6 only can be a number or not. That's also we need to see. Fine. At the same time, we need to check for whether 2467 can also be a sub or not because we are finding the continuous sub array sub, right? So we just need to check whether that's possible or not. And at the same time, we need to check for 467, okay? Then uh, 46, this summation also. And also the last one, that is a 67, whether that's a summation or not. 
I mean, that can be a possibility. Like the last two elements are uh, giving us the appropriate result, right? So that's oh, the thing we need to check over here. So how can we do with this check? So the idea that you should come up is like, uh, see, one solution that you can always find everywhere is using a mathematical formula where you are continuously doing a, a modulus operation on all of these numbers, okay? So that's a, a solution is that you can easily find that. But uh, let's not try to find that. Uh, like that's, I find that a bit uh, tough to understand. So let's come up with a solution that might be easier to understand, okay? So more or less, we can see that we need to find the summation of these values, right? So what if we do something like that's an uh, there's an added to us like twenty three is there, then followed by uh, two, four. That's an array given to us, fine. Uh, six and seven, fine. So what we do? Let's try to find the summation of them. Okay, let's try to find the summation of them in what manner that. Uh, wherever we are we use some of the previous one okay so first thing 23 remains 23 right uh, because there's no summation but from this first element we'll keep finding summation so what the summation is summation is simply like 23 plus 2 that is 25 we got our summation now what our next step will be we will check whether this particular value that the num uh, that, that this i position value we are at okay we started our i from this position and kept uh, summing the previous element, fine. So we'll check the whether i position value, if we uh, do a modulus of this with k, is this zero? If this is zero, that means we find a summation where the numbers, uh, like the sum, is uh, a, a multiple of our particular, uh, sum is a multiple of our particular value, okay? Uh, like uh, multiple of k we have. Now, the next thing we should check is the reverse order. Reverse order means, uh, let me check for the next one, like after that. So uh, then we find 4 and we add 4 to it. That is 29. Fine. Now we check whether 29 is a, a modulus of k or not. No, it's not. So now we check the reverse one. The reverse one, what I mean is, we just subtract the first value. I mean, just the 2, uh, if the i is there, so i minus 2, i minus 2 is the this position value. So we just subtract the value till this point. Okay, so what if we subtract this? We, if we subtract this, see, if we subtract this, the value remains to be 6. Is it a multiple of k? Yes, it is a multiple of k. It will get 0 and return true. We found our answer. Okay, then what if it was not? Okay, what if it was not? We keep adding 6, like the next element, to our uh, particular uh, value over here. Okay, we keep adding our next element to a value that is with 29 okay what if we add that if we add 29 over here fine uh like 29 and 6 then we got 35 right see over here we got 35 over here right and is it is 35 divisible with 6 no we'll check whether if we remove the elements uh before that up to 25 if we remove up till 25 we get 10 that's also not a uh, multiple right so this is the approach we uh, will keep because uh, any two elements can be a value, right? So we need to check whether all the elements, uh, all the continuous subarray is going to be that. At the same time, you need to check whether 35 minus 23, uh, that is that this three elements, summation of these three elements is a uh, zero or not. Like is um, a particular, uh, some multiple, like this, is this a multiple or not, right? So that's what we need to check. Now, this is the approach you can go ahead with. I think this is not pretty hard to understand that what we are doing, we are uh, taking another array. So you can, you cannot take, you may not take another array. So you may go ahead with the same array. So you had 23, 2, 4, 6. You just start with i is this and you just keep adding the previous i value. Right? And what you do is like you, uh, like if uh, take another variable j, where j is equal to i, make sure j minus 2 is uh, greater than 0. Okay, like greater than or equal to 0. So what will happen is uh, if uh, simply like if uh, this value uh, like this will keep subtracting the first value, okay? Then we subtracting the last two values and see whether like this uh, summation is coming up to a uh, modulus k or not, okay? So what are you subtracting? 35 minus 23 
is it uh, that is the sum till the last point right then 75 minus 25 so that's the sum till this point right so we just keep checking that and if that sum is uh, 35 minus 25 is the sum for this values right for these two values 35 minus 23 is the sum for these three values fine so we just keep checking that way and if anyway we find that yes, uh, this is a particular solution uh, where we are coming up to a multiple of k, that is a modulus of uh, zero. Okay, uh, then it's done. We found our value. Okay, we found our, and we'll simply return true, nothing much. Okay, that's it. So let me quickly write down this code. Now, uh, there's something we need to know. Uh, our test case, like I was uh, trying this out uh, previously, so something I noticed is like. In this approach, there will be a small flaw. The flopping, uh, what can be a small flaw is like if there are consecutive zeros uh, in our array, okay, you know, this array nums that are given to us, if they're consecutive zero, because we are just finding a sum of them, okay, continuously finding a sum of them. So say 35 minus the last values and say this, this two values are zero, okay. So this two, now 35 minus 25 should have written, uh, like logically what I find is should have written uh, a zero because if these two values were zero, right? But somehow I'm finding that it is giving us a wrong answer. So what a solution uh, breakthrough we can do is like we can check if this number and the previous number are zero on, okay? So uh, uh, let, let's not think of that. I, I will show you what will happen if that ha if that's the case. That's a particular test case that I saw. So let's... Uh, uh, run this like let's write this code and uh, run it for it okay so here we have our code over here so uh, this is the small uh, additional stuff that we need to do just uh, another loop and we are checking if, if both the numbers are zero we're returning true okay so th this is a solution that i came up with because of a particular test case that was uh, causing error of this kind of uh, situation okay else you, you there's no no particular use of this. Let's understand what's uh, the our main condition, what we're going with. with. Fine. We are uh, starting from i equal to one and going till less than length, nums dot length. Fine. Now we are just adding the sum. So nums i equal to nums i plus nums of i minus one. What are the previous values at the nums? We just add it. Okay, there's a continuous sum we're doing, but we're doing that in our own array the array given to us we are not using additional memory for that right now further what is what we're doing is like we're checking if our sum till now sum till this position mod k is zero or not okay is like sum till now is a multiple of k or not if it is written true we found it there's nothing to do no further conversion we return it then we uh if it is not then we take another variable j that is our current uh position i fine we, just, we first check that whether j is greater or not. If j is greater, we check for if nums of i, that is the sum till this position, is greater than k or not. It might happen that the nums is uh, like the k is 6 and the previous value still now is 1, 1, uh, 2, uh, 1, something like this happened till now. Fine. So what will happen? So that's why you need to check for the sum, uh, sum of the numbers, that is the nums of i, uh, our current sum. That's what we are storing in this value, right? Look here. So the current sum is greater than k or not. If it is greater than k, that means there's a possibility that you will find a modulus, okay? Now, uh, you will check whether nums i minus nums j minus two. So j is currently at i minus two. Uh, say uh, i was like two, uh, j is like two, fine. Two means uh, at this position, uh, zero, uh, one, right so that's that is portion so what uh, we are trying to find out is like nums of i minus nums of j so nums of i is what the summation of all in this point and nums of j minus 2 is like 2 minus 2 is 0 so nums of j minus 2 is this point so we just first subtracting all the values till this point okay the, like uh, keeping a distance of two uh two elements we're checking our current element and the previous element yeah whether it's a uh, mod k is 0 if it is we return true if it is not, we re uh, like uh, make zero a bit less. Okay, we reduce zero. So what will happen? We reduce uh, not uh, sorry, not reduce zero, but rather we reduce j. So what this reduction of j will do? This will move from this to this uh, till the other elements. Okay. Now we're checking for last three elements. Whether this last three elements sum, there's nums i minus nums of j minus two. 
like now j became a bit more uh, minus so j minus 2 is greater than thing something like that so if that is zero we return true so we just keep reducing the j and we just kept checking whether this is like uh this particularly is like a submission we whether any how we find up not or not fine ultimately if in throughout the whole session if we don't find a true return we return false so we didn't find anything that's a simple this is a, it's a step now let's quickly run this uh, uh, to just show you how this code works see so this it uh, shows me like right now it shows me 8 millisecond but uh, obviously this is a 3 millisecond solution which i previously tried it was showing with 3 millisecond solution okay so uh, that's it about this question guys so i hope i can make you understand how you can think of finding the solution so obviously you can use other multiple approaches there can be a, a mathematical approach to this question but uh, obviously i don't like the mathematical approach uh, i couldn't understand it so i'm not going to explain it to you fine so that's about this question guys so if you have any doubts remaining about this question make sure to comment them down in the comments as well i'll be happy to help you out with uh, any kind of doubts you have see this came down to 3 millisecond as i said this is a 3 millisecond solution this is a faster solution you can come up fine so thank you all for watching this video hope to see you soon in my next video as well thank you